Mike D and Coop is debating Kanye West on being high at all time MC list and speak on ghostwriting. If that isn't high, dick suck, I don't know what the fuck that is. Wow. Um. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna be juicy. I'm um, gonna be surprised what the fuck I'm getting myself into in this one. Uh, let's see. Body, man. You know what? I tried to get into some basketball last night. I was watching so many games. Um, so it was a good game. It was Miami. Okay, see, it was a good game. Oh, the 40 for 40 game? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that was necessarily a good game. <laughs> you know what, Mike, I do want to handle, like, some personal business. I had the um, pleasure of meeting Miss Family. Their name is Funk, the Funk Family. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Funk just underwent her last chemo and radiation treatment yesterday, and she just really, really touched my soul yesterday, and I just, her whole family signed up to follow the podcast. Oh, um, and so I just want to wish the Funk Family nothing but the best and blessings. They have a, Mr. and Mrs. Funk, they have two young children, and uh, it's really just a blessing for her to be done with her chemo. I shared some of the things going on personally with somebody who was supposed to meet who has cancer. Um, and I'm not going to divulge out of you know out of respect for them, yeah. and also losing my um my cousin who was like my best sister to breast cancer uh, over over five years ago. So just shout out to the Bone family. I want to send all my love, blessings, and prayers your way for continued health and prosperity. Um, that's all I got. Let's get it cracking. Most definitely. Uh, shout out to them, and you know that's a tough thing. Uh, um, it's a great thing to get past. So blessings out there. Uh, yeah. Fantasy Seven Thirty One with Super Chat you guys heard that new Black Thought track? I tagged you in it on Twitter. It's fire. I bet it is fire. Good for Black Thought starting off 2023 with fire. Uh, I know Hit Boy and Offset are dropping something Friday. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Um, that's an interesting pairing. I actually like the, uh, the record that Offset put out, that 54321 record, and, um, you know, I think that a lot of things were going on and didn't really, uh, get jump-started the way it needed to, and I think we just talked about it here, the choreography that he was attempting to do, uh, when he performed it on Fallon, I believe. I liked it. I liked the direction he was going, you know, he just didn't have cardio up, you know what I mean? Like, on, in theory, great concept, but I like seeing him execute on it, so looking forward to hearing what Hitpoint Offset got Friday as well. We're gonna check out that Black Thought track. We got a lot of housekeeping to do as far as these lists go. You know, there's a, there is a generation of hip-hop fans who feel like Kanye West has to be high on the list. And there's a generation of hip-hop fans who feel like Kanye West doesn't belong high on the list. And then we have this whole notion of... Oh, top 20 is high, Mike. Top 20 is high. No, 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 no. Listen, cool. No, no, and no, I say this respectfully. See, the problem with this, with this is that people fail to realize that this is a generation that <laughs> more than likely will listen to this. Like, the fact that these guys are actually listening to hip-hop fans for this shit is kind of surprising. But then again, I shouldn't really... I would say this respectfully. A lot of niggas rap, but when you look at the records and what this guy has made, we can't say that there are five people even who have done that. We just can't, regardless of what the skill level is. This is what I meant when I said people literally do this shit all the fucking time, and now I'm starting to realize how cringy this shit is. I'm really starting to realize how cringy that shit is now. Like, for them to literally do that, like, it's so cringy. Like, y'all are just approaching to the fucking masses now. Because I, because one thing for sure, you can tell that either these motherfuckers are either not really, well, self-taught to know anything, and that's fine if you are not self-taught. If you had these type of issues, that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and judge you for that. My issue is that how in the hell are you literally sticking with the shit that the fans are doing and basically saying, because at this very point, I'm not going to hold you. It's very strange to me how it's all of a sudden that the fans literally decide to go and not to be honest, but it's strange to me how in the world these guys go immediately to, to going hardcore on these motherfuckers, even though they haven't done not a single thing in a long time. And skill is a huge part of hip hop. So again, if you're just basing it off of like albums, at this very point, I can't, I can't seem to understand why is this a discussion and then again you're literally just trying to like please the masses again you're basically doing just that and for what like it's abundantly clear that you are literally like listening to the fucking hip-hop society but literally w willing to say that yeah he's he's the best MC C of all time I wouldn't say he's the best. Maybe I'm wrong, because, again, I'm kind of going off a hypothetical. But, on the other hand, it does seem like that they're trying to, like, please the masses, like, do all this dumb stuff, and then try to please 
the fans of this generation of hip hop. And well, actually no, just the generation of generation of the hip hip hop era that was the 2000s. Now, don't get me wrong. I can understand if it was a certain amount of artists. That part I can understand. My big issue with that is that if you're not going to be honest with yourself and not realize that there is nothing there, then I can't really like I can't really talk to you about that. Because it's abundantly clear you do not know anything. And at this point, these two are literally like one signing with fans, especially Kanye fans, which is I'm not even fucking surprised. I've gotten so many controversial virtual shit like happen like off camera with Kanye fans and I'm, I'm not even gonna start that shit like that's already a dead-end issue like I got no time to talk about that shit but long story short um it was rough because Kanye fans for some odd reason can't seem to acknowledge his flaws and when they don't it puts it puts them in a fucking situation where they're just holding his hands so tight and expecting everybody to be on their side. Like, it's just so cringy. And I hate when people do that. Like, it's so fucking cringy. Like, accept these, accept the fact that this man has flaws. Like, the fact that you literally take out skill just shows you're trying just to please the masses. Like, it just doesn't make sense how you literally do that almost immediately. Like, come on. Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen you do. Like, I can un understand, hey, if you want to please the masses, you want to get your money, do you. But don't just sit there and like, literally act like that's your fucking opinion when it's fucking not. It clearly is not. It's clearly not your fucking opinion. It's the fucking fans that you have that have that opinion and when have that opinion you don't want to disagree with them you literally want to sit there and try to say that you you agree with them a hundred percent on everything that they've said and the things they've done when there's no reason to at all you can disagree it's just you choose not to it just is what it is it's just sad like and I was right about this the first time. Like, if you're gonna sit there and try to li literally, like, put him on the all-time list, go ahead. But if you're gonna put him at 20, uh, good luck with that. Because, name me. Because I dare you to say that every single... I dare you to say that in this day and... Well, not in this day and age, but you're gonna sit there and tell me that almost every hip hop artist that he's supposed to be going against is definitely supposed to be supposed to be skilled, and I do mean skilled. So there's no fucking reason for you to li literally push that narrative away and then assume that they're not that there isn't going to be any pushback for that narrative. Like, come on. Again, like I said, you don't want to listen. Go ahead. That's your opinion. That's you. Your stuff, go ahead, do you. But you not sit there and try to literally make an opinion that's not even yours. You know in damn well that skill fucking matters. Matters. It, sub, it's a very huge part. Excuse me. It's a very huge part of the curriculum of rap. So it wouldn't make sense for you to immediately take that away. That doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. You're just basically, like, you're just basically doing that for no fucking reason. Like, come on, now. Like, you're just basically going against some... Going against a narrative that's not even fucking reasonable. You're putting yourself in a place where it's not even in the same place. And you're basically just siding with fans. I've been said this before, and I'll say this again. If these motherfuckers have opinions on it so much, how much want to guarantee they l immediately don't fucking talk about the fact that kind of... Kanye's rap bars are so minuscule. And I wouldn't say it's below basic. It's literally average. Like, bro, come on. Seriously? I would say if as far as average rappers is concerned, all-time MC C's should be at least, at least, if you're gonna be talking about all-time MCs, 
This man is damn near. Damn near, and I'm being honest. This man is damn near. Damn near, almost close. I would, if I would say so myself, I would probably say damn near. Tw well, I wouldn't. Well, no. I'd say 28 or 25. I say 28 and 25 because he's not that bad of a rapper. Like, he's not that bad of a rapper to the point where you expect him to little be like the best of the best. Like, he's. He's an average rapper. He, his bars are solid. He knows what he's doing. Simple as that. Nothing too serious. However, when you try to be disingenuous and try to put him in the top 20, name me, name me the people below top, below of the five people of that top 20. Name the ones behind them, because I swear to God, I will debunk that so fucking quick that you will not. You will not see the day of light again. Go ahead! You know you, you know that your comments are not even in the fucking same realm as everyone else. So you choose to make a val make a valid cause and that's kinda on you, but hey, not that guys. But let's just see what they do, because I'm I'm curious on where the hell they actually rank him. No, I think it would get the people. And this is what we gotta talk about. It's similar to Snoop, not really LL, but you know it comes into play as well. It's that notion of ghost right? and I think that's the thing we really gotta hit in the bud because I saw on Twitter that somebody is out here saying that Ron Best wrote Jesus Walk. He did not write Jesus Walk. He wrote to it because he found the sample for Kanye. He couldn't do anything with it. He couldn't sample for Kanye, so that it could be his song. Kanye being very good that he is, made the song with the buzz as they should do. Ron Best wrote to it. Jay wrote to it. Jay had a deal. Ron Best did not. He said, go ahead, use the song. That's what it is. Because my thing when it comes to these whole ghostwriting stories, or I did this, this, and that, but we're going to go through, you know, people's catalogs today, because Kanye's catalog, as uh, an album maker, we keep talking about him as an album maker, but his single catalog is incredible. And, you know, it was successful as well. My thing is, if somebody wrote a song like a Jesus Walks, where are your hits? And I, say, and I say that to everyone. Even when Superb was out here talking about he wrote Supreme Fine Tell the Ghost, rest in peace to Superb. My thing is, where is there Supreme Fine Tell? I don't feel like that's too much to ask. I will say this again, and I'll say this to the, the great depths of God. If the fucking... At this very point, I'm saying this right now. You already know this, and I hate when people do this shit. If the fucking... Fucking social media aid is so hell-bent on fucking hits, it should tell you how much much they literally do not... Do not care about the skill of hit, of one. Well, yeah. That just kind of shows you they just don't know the skill of fucking... Rap, and that's just like, wow. You're really like hell bent on hits instead of actual, actual tracks. Because in this modern day generation, I can understand why. Because again, um, not many people are keen on the skill because it's very clear that they, they are holding on to that grasp of that. But here's my issue with that. When it comes to Kanye, I think a lot of people need to understand that there are way more skillful MCs and fucking Kanye, and I will happily say that. But if they put him in a like rank where he where he's above top 15, I'm gonna actually have an issue. Cause again, this man has not, and I quote, I will say this right now, this man has doubled down since he actually fucking started as a rapper. So again, his fucking skill, and if he has improved, his skill has, if he had skill when it came through, bro, it's been the same for for a long time. Nothing has fucking changed. So again, where is your logic in this? Is he, is it because you guys are too fucking fatal to actually accept the fact that production is a thing, but it just shows that production can carry the fucking music, but the rapper and the artist cannot. Again, you're literally just trying the, your best to literally try to lie to these people. But I guess I'm wrong, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I already said this before. I don't hate Kanye. He's, he's a solid rapper. Definitely, definitely deserves to be there. My issue is that when people literally try to make him as high as he should be. Now, granted, it, if it's fans, I don't really give a shit. But if it's people like this that just chooses to literally listen to what the fans say, 
willy-nilly, then I'm sorry, that's not your opinion, that's theirs. Now, if maybe if that maybe that's their opinion. If that's their opinion, that, that just kind of shows you again, they are Kanye stands. <laughs> and again, these particular Kanye stands, and I've always said this, they don't want to admit that this man has flaws. When it comes to fucking <laughs> rap skill wise, like he has some flaws. Like how hard is that for you to understand? If you can't accept the fact that this man has like flaws in, uh, not in today's, but um, even when he was in his prime of his career, how, well one, I think you failed to realize how rap fucking works. When you, when you separate them both, there has to be a level of, of scrutiny. If you're talking about his singing, definitely deserve, deserve to be above the top 50. Rap skill, definitely, at least has to be near 28 or 25. If he, if he's anywhere near more than that, then you're basically one. You're basically just, <laughs> you're playing devil's advocate and trying to live literally basically say that hey production should should matter and artists should be carried in these songs that's all i'm saying like if you're gonna literally make that point you might as well say it like admit the fact that you're like admit that with your argument because otherwise you're just making shit up and you're just basically playing devil's advocate on a fucking place that's not even yours especially a narrative that literally is completely fucking flawed but hey let's see let's see though let's see because music can write drunk and love with jay and beyonce it don't fucking matter because he's music he got a whole bunch of it he don't need to harp on the fact that oh i wrote drunk and love so i think a couple things need to be unpacked obviously so let's start with Kanye. first of all there are five mcs whose name i have on the list right now and what i'd like to do today because really what i didn't like is that i did what you would call a skeleton track like i look at this track i look at this list like it's a skeleton list like we're filling it out right now like like we did last week like i'm really throwing stuff at the wall and seeing how people are responding the way now we're going to talk about kanye first and foremost and rightfully so but i want to talk about black thought who played the game in front of you today too because i think placing them properly and figuring out where they work with all this because i've seen the drawback that people have been giving me about uh, those guys with the exception of the game and i personally want to bring up the game the person that i kind of want to do a little bit today but to the kanye thing like <clears throat> i mean you and me were just behind the scenes we we're like no no it's time to go live because like i was you were just saying it's like well you feel like game has more hits than today and i'm yeah. like okay. i don't feel that way okay it's right here <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem is with mic performances is that they all can be spectacular. Oh, excuse me. They can all be spectacular. And that in alone is, again, one of the few loopholes with only basing it around mic performances. If you're just basing it around mic performances, then again, you're not really exactly prepared to set this up on your own. And you're pretty much just being way too, like performance heavy on an artist like say for example if you judge every single person just based around their mic performance they're all more than likely to get a top one spot because of the fact that their performance would be phenomenal because of the fact that again you can't make a prediction about somebody else's performance just based around the performance alone there has to be more to it and by the way going back to the argument i just made just now i also want to mention that and that's the same thing goes for anyone who only focuses on lyrics as well because lyrics can do a lot of things but also there has to be some type of evidence with the production too because again they have to perform on production as well if they can carry out the production value of that by not just making it but also out rapping in singing in that song to carry it out for the rest of the song then you're good but if you're gonna sit there and tell me that you only 
only going to base it around like certain changes like that. I, I just don't think that just that, that will work. I don't think that will work. Because the reason I say that won't work is because where does everything lie? Everything lies with a a bit of well, one, a bit of one layer that needs to be set. And the second one is what is the production value for and how will the artist tackle it? Because if they're going to let the song carry out throughout the rest of the entire album, the entire song, mixtape, EP, any of these things, then you can't literally say that they're supposed to heavily rely on hits, heavily rely on production, because it wouldn't fucking work. And that argument alone is fundamentally flawed. So, again, that's where I keep telling people, like, y'all need to realize that that is going to happen sometimes. It is. But yeah, that, it's just crazy how people immediately go to that um, prediction almost immediately. It's just, just not a good um, way to tackle things. It's just not. Another thing, what the fuck does an MC have to do with just production value and hits? Does anyone not fucking realize that again, MCs and fucking fucking rappers are completely separate? And what I mean by completely separate, people need to understand that again, these are not these are not like the second you're an MC, you're you're already like a prime level rapper. No, that's not the fucking case. These are literally rappers in training. If you don't know that, I don't know what to tell you. MCs are literally rappers in training, at least to a certain degree. I wouldn't say all of them are, because it depends on which one you're talking about. But in all in all, rappers are literally, literally um, the student of the game, and they need... And sometimes they're not entirely in their best interest and they one, they're not really in their prime. So again, making that comment alone is crazy. And also production value wouldn't matter because again, their craft still needs improvement.
Now, there are some MCs that choose to, like, stay in in that same place because sometimes, and I'll say this, they don't want, they don't want to live that rapper lifestyle. And that's fair. Y'all want to stay there? That's fine. However, there's also some of them that are still trying to get out of the rap game at probably like almost close to eight, age 30, late 30s, almost cl close to 40s as well. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, trust me. And when I tell you like some of these, like certain artists are super, super bass heavy on every fucking thing, it is super based on everything. Because there has to be some type of level of where you're going with this. Because it's abundantly clear you can't make that same comment. Like, it's not the same. Consequences are. There has to be a level of change that you're willing to go for. Especially if you already know that, hey, you have some terminal skills that don't really fit the budget. And you need some changes on that and B if everything is not there then you're definitely not cut to be a fucking rapper and you're not ready to make it into one into the industry or making it into a completely different label or making your own you're not ready you're definitely not fucking ready so but then there's also certain artists as well that literally like don't follow that same traditional path so, when it comes to Kanye, he followed that path, but he, but he, it was damn near, damn near close, close to the regular arc of Lauren Hill, and I would definitely say a little bit of, um, a little bit on par with like almost close, close to Nas and Jay-Z. Like, at that very point, it's like the level scheme that Kanye is literally like trying to go, or at least going for it, is going directly to that alone. And when you're trying to go to that alone, it literally like drags you down. And when you're trying your best, um, it's not enough, which is perfectly fine. Because again, you could have these type of like common sense since comments and all that stuff but when you literally decide to think that artists deserve to to do something like that and they're expected to be like the top bet be number one at the best thing there has to be a clean sheet a layer a full layer of things that has to like basically be put out but for some odd reason with this you just completely forget like again so many people are so invested in only focusing on production, they refuse to understand the flaws of almost every artist ever. It's the fact that they're not gonna be at their best at their peak. They're not. Because once their peak comes through, they're pretty much already already cashed out, they already do everything, and they're pretty much retired at this point. They're still the same way as they were in their prime, and they're still gonna keep going regardless of their numbers. It just is what it is. So the fact that they're trying to like literally space it off mic performance and most importantly production value just shows that they're, <laughs> I'm sorry, but they're such cucks when it comes to literal, literal, literal ways of how to set up, well one, how to set up a list, two, how to understand who is better at rapping because it is very clear that if you can't tell a better MC than anyone else and if you're only basing it on production then no artist should be literally <laughs> be present in that same retrospect it shouldn't be the same it really shouldn't but hey I digress I digress um let's go this way Sorry, off topic. Didn't see that. Check it out. I think things like that. Anything where automated um, entity can take away from, you know, the human skill set and the human ability to generate income, I think is a bad thing. At least in mass. 
Because again, we talk about an industry that artists need need funding to actually work, right? Um, so if if people start becoming receptive to artificial intelligence in an art form sense, where does that leave the actual art, especially when big corporate entities are able to just pay a robot or whatever one time and don't have to actually work out deals and splits with the artificial uh, artists or whatever? Like, I don't think it's a good thing, but I need to look more into it. You want to um, want to get to this? I got hella notes. No, I'm, I'm gonna. I just want you to um, state your case. Okay, let me state my case. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you kind of start forging this in terms of where we should put Kanye because right now we have him placed at number six. After thinking 4K RS1. I, I think it's justified. So this okay. is where I'm going to go, right? Yep. I hear you with this, with the uh, streets watching the B-sides and this and that, but why do we hold Jay-Z so high outside of his individual lyrical talent? This hit-making skills is highly strong, correct? Okay, so I'm always holding this. My biggest critique about him was that, well, his hits was never like that in any way. I've always said that. I've always said that. I've said this live on the show multiple times. I've said that. On a personal level, his hits have always been overrated. That was never what made his day to me, though. Like, I mean, I've always said that. But that's not what the masses crowned him for. Correct? You and I have already said that these are the masses. But when it comes to the masses, and him being Jay Z, the same thing he is, that, you know, warrants the attention that he wants, based on the impression, right? Yeah, but okay, but when I say his hits are overrated, I say, you know, I'm saying that, I'm not even actually saying that, like, as a disrespect. I'm actually saying that as a compliment. And, like, it's the best. And it's charisma and it's hustle. Like, it's so supreme. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, that the legend of it and the legend of the songs is over exaggerated and overemphasized. It was when the songs were being made. That's more of a testimony to that hustler and that charismatic guy than he is than anything else. Because I'm telling you, like, when I play his best singles next to Biggie and Tupac singles, oh, no, 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 no. It don't even, it don't even, it don't even add up or make sense to me why they would call him a hit maker on that level. So if you want to tell me Kanye is a better hit maker, that's a song maker overall. That, 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 that is debatable to me about. Hold on, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Because everything that you're saying, Mike. Well, if that's the case, we gotta start putting Dr. Dre and puffing these conversations about the shit that Gay does well. And I'm gonna give you an example in a little bit. Why? Because the way that you're talking about Kanye, it's like, okay, okay, boy, Drake's true. Kanye, like, <laughs> like, the true. Like, the true. That is so true. Drake got Kanye beat on everything that you're talking about. Dr. Dre doesn't. And, and Drake is not even registering in this conversation. Dr. That's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't really add up when you do that. I, I think you're just kind of Kanye disrespectfully. The, the chronic and the chronic 2001 are better than everything Kanye's ever made. As an MC, there's no way we can sit here and say that Dr. Dre has a record like Do the Liar, All Falls Down, Jesus Walks. He just doesn't. He doesn't have right, that kind of range. If you want to talk about, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about, talk about bitches and slapping hoes and that six fold shit, sure. But if you want to talk about a complete artist who has content, subject matter, and who can actually make hit records off of a record like, let me go down and say, Do the Liar. No, 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 no,
And whenever that shit happens, I think people fail to realize like there is gonna be like fatal weaknesses, there are gonna be like issues end upon end. Like you can't be expected to do everything. Like there's gonna be some flaws that are going to happen, but if you're gonna literally try to assume that they're so fucking far out, they're not gonna be able to change the content, and if they still got it, and dude, they they have the fucking ability to do so. Just like the same way I said about these artists. Like I even said the same thing about fucking um about some of these artists of this modern generation. These guys are only doing this shit because they, because one, they know in damn well that it will give give them money and get them trending onto the mainstream status. But in all seriousness, they have the choice to move back to the original original studies because they can fucking do it. It's not like they can't. They have, they can fucking do that. Like, it's not hard for them to do it. It's not like it's something that is hard for them to do. Like, it's clearly something that is not that hard for them to do. Like, come on, dog. Like, come on now. Because now you're fucking overdoing it. Like, like, where is the common sense in that? Because I'm just like, there's no way you're sitting here and telling me that these guys are MCs. Keep in mind, they are MCs. And you're gonna sit there and tell me that Kanye is capable, of, and I quote, capable of handling it on changing content on the same symbol level as Dr. Dre? The answer to that is kind of yes and also no. Because I think a lot of people need to also realize that Kanye only chooses to change his content when it when it matters the most and he still sticks to the same thing he's been doing for such a long time and he never changes up which is something i again which it props to him if he doesn't want to change he doesn't want to change but again you gotta stop fucking cherry picking and then just literally giving one side instead of the other like just stop doing that man just stop doing it please but unfortunately they're not gonna do that like it's very clear that this man is like super fucking toxic heavy on Kanye and I swear to god I'm, I'll be surprised on where he puts him because that that would be so fucking crazy I would be so surprised on where the hell he puts him like that would be super insane and the fact that oh god sorry and the fact that he will immediately go towards doing that alone will be resulting in one of the few reasons why this generation is falling off as far as hip-hop content. I'm just being honest. Like, certain things need to be said, man. Like, come on. Like, god damn, bro. You don't write your praise little boy every time and now you're trying to say something. I do, but he didn't write these references. And neither did Kanye. Kanye didn't write these references. Well, who wrote them, dude? Who wrote them? No, we gotta stop. No, 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 no. That we gotta stop. Wait, he said that Dre doesn't write his own shit? Now, I will agree that, again, Dre does tend to not write his shit every now and then. But the fact that you're gonna sit there and literally try to act like, like Kanye has been writing his own shit for a long time it's surprising to me because i even said this before certain artists especially in these nowadays will more than likely to go and and decide to ghost write once exactly once and that is it and kanye is one of them and i don't want to hear that bullshit because i think a lot of people need to understand that kanye is more than likely to make his own shit, but he's definitely has go ghostwriter at some point. I wouldn't say say he's done it entirely, but I definitely can't say say that he's completely clean because that's a fucking lie. And I dare somebody to come at me and say that they're that this man is fucking clean, completely fucking clean, because that is a lie in its own right. And you know that's a fucking lie. Why the fuck would you literally assume that you know when somebody is clean when you haven't done the research? I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong, though, because it's been a while. Um, and I haven't actually researched Kanye in a bit, so. 
But I do know a lot of the, like, part of his career and his history on certain things. So, it's not like I completely caught off in the dark. But the thing that that's more than likely to, like, concern me in this is that somehow in the midst of all this, these motherfuckers figured out a way to, like, try and map out certain narratives that don't fucking work. And when these narratives come out, some of these fans agree with them. Like, it's insane to me how in the world that works, and the fact that you can't tell the difference is mind-boggling. And it just kind of shows you that you can't really have a conversation about this at all. It's just completely off at some point. It's like, you know your fucking flaws, you know the issues, but I just don't understand where you get this idea that somehow this is your forte and somehow in a matter of minutes people aren't in the same fucking realm like i just don't get that shit because where in the world do they go then because you're gonna sit there and tell me like people like dre and all that stuff they can't rap because they've mostly been producing shit all their entire life and it's not him it's just literally other people and i'm just sitting there like again he's made his own music he's wrote his own shit he may have ghostwritten every once in a while. That's pretty much almost the majority of artists today. Like, come on. At this very point, that argument is kind of flawed, but also at the same time, why the fuck are you literally arguing a flawed and irrelevant fucking fucking saying into a MC listing? Why the fuck would you do that? That alone doesn't fucking makes sense again that's just mind-boggling to me i don't know about anybody else like i said everybody disagrees with me so i i, I can't really be too surprised by that people disagree with everything i do like everything i say and shit but they never seem to tackle me about it surprising also kills me about this is that like there's so many people that assume that they know what the fuck they're talking about in reality when they don't but I already I'm, I'm repeating myself I'm sorry let's just get back into it Everyone has a different opinion depends on everything. What matters is what you think. Eh, not entirely, because some people are, get too conspiracy egged on, and it kind of just, like, it fucks up the goddamn, goddamn issues here and there, so. I, I wouldn't even suggest that that's a good option, honestly. Like, 
if you have your own opinion, that's fine. But my only issue is that if you literally try to draw a narrative that doesn't even, that's not even factually correct, and then you try to literally mix it with an opinion, that's where it kind of like goes down. Cause then there's so many loopholes that these guys can literally like pop in. Like there's so many things to pick out and all that stuff. Like it just wouldn't be any points. Like for a prime example, say if you literally say like, oh, these rappers, rappers are sounding the same. I mean, again, besides them being lyrically sound and all that stuff, stuff, they sound completely different. Or basically, don't force your opinion, opinion on others. That's what the majority of them do. That's I, I think a lot of people need to understand that that's what they kind of do to a certain degree. Like, even if like you have these type of um, like parts, there's certain fans that force opinions on others, and when they do, it gets like super out of hand. Like, ah. Shit. What? How did I drop it again? Fuck's sake. I thought I had it with me. What the fuck? Okay, um, let me go back and grab it, because I think I, I think I dropped it. God damn it. But you are right, though. You, people just can't really force their opinions on others, because that, that's something you don't do. But I've always said that that's been the issue of the, the rap game alone, so. Whenever you have these critics, like, have talks with others, it gets fucking crazy from every single conversation, from every single group, every single fan base. It gets real, real toxic. Especially if you know and good well, it gets this toxic. Even if you can figure that out, it's it's just like that all the time. God damn it. Of course the knockback killed me. But it's a good thing it didn't fucking make me lose a life. But hey, it, it just seems like they have their own interest. It, that's fine. I got no problem with that at all. So hi, it's because he is successful. Chop line, correct? We always talk about it. Okay, you want to go down the line with the other singles then? I want you to go ahead and start. Because all the interest is hard. Start comparing it to those Kanye songs. Okay, so we're talking about so you can see how uncertain certain sound. Are you serious? Like, well, yeah, I'm serious. Like, you want to compare feeling it to Gold Digger? What is compare? What's the Gold Digger? Quality is opinionated. That is very true. That is very true. But again, it depends on your point of view. Because I think a lot of people need to understand that it can be a fact that quality quality matters in hip hop because it depends because name me because if you're going to sit there and tell me that no quality like matters in the hip hop scene it, it just again that kind of just it doubles down again like opinions is just <sighs> can you do I'm just I'm just so I'm not even going to hold you I'm just cringing and I'm just so disappointed I'm just so disappointed in this. Honestly, when I'm looking at these singles, when I'm looking at these singles, yay, yeah, singles are more quality. The card over Super Chat says, uh, Kanye is top 10, even with the Ghost Rider, and the man still has hook making ability, song making ability, and classic album making ability. Uh, Jay Short from Super Chat says, Kanye is, uh, Classic album making ability. Do you see what I mean when I say that, again, these particular statements need to at least not have loopholes? Because there's so many loopholes to that statement alone. Wow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Now I want to see 
what he does with this. Because I swear, I swear, if he goes the direct route, I think he's going to, because I, I have a very bad feeling, he's going to go directly to, to dismissing, again, he's going to dismiss skill and then try to li literally bring, like, classic albums and all that stuff, like, production on certain albums, EPs, and everything like that. He's only going to bring up that argument, but don't bring up the fucking skill part of it. Are you... That is maddening. I, I, I dare him to do this. Wow. Name is to have these eyes, especially this one. Uh, Carlo also said, have these What kind of groovy ass shit is that to say next? This really makes too mad, I see. Carlo says, which Jay, he said, which Jay hit is overrated specifically? Because personally, the only overrated hits that he had are the ones on the Blueprint 3 and so on. Uh, hold on, let's see. So many other super chats before I keep going. Hmm. He the super chat says, song making and its quality doesn't mean hit making can be a great song. The streets, too. Um, Ilsum Super Chat says, uh, there's a video of Ron Best performing Jesus Walks before Kanye got it. Uh, flow and a bunch of lines Kanye used. Consequence broke him also. Are you sure it's before Kanye got it because the beat was actually the Kanye produced beat? Like, people sitting here acting like they were in the studio or something. Who y'all think made the beat? This is the situation, this is the situation where Alchemist gave Roz Kaz and Jada Kiss the same beat and we're sitting here speculating on who performed it first. The nigga made the beat. You don't think that he recorded it too? Like, what are we talking about? No, <laughs> actually, actually, he didn't record either one of them. He sent both of them the versions. And Raz Kaz's Home Sweet Home was actually a great record from the record of his career too. It's a dope record. Yeah, Jay Wilder Super Chat says, uh, let's have the longevity combo between Ye and Drake. And I don't want to do that. Uh, 36 Shameless of Super Chat says, how, many, how much of uh, adding Kanye to this list is production based versus rap based? Uh, this is a top 10 hip hop artist list, and if Ye's lyrics are over any other production, then it doesn't hit like that. This argument sounds impact based only, does it? I think that the thing is, we can't punish the man for being a great producer. You know what I'm saying? Like, you no, can't I punish the man for being a great producer. I think, okay, I think that you were underestimating. If you say a statement, statement, keep it neutral all front, front, and don't mix your opinion to facts. That's very true, very true. And I, and I even said this, bro. Tell me why I've, I've been saying this shit. Thank you, someone has been telling, saying the same shit as I have. Cause I mentioned this before. Do not mix your opinions with facts. Cause again, there are. Those are two completely different definitions. Do not do that. Because then you have to literally make sure that that claim alone doesn't literally get fucking demolished by someone that has evidence to back it up. Like, come on. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, God. And look, look, look at this. And I knew he was going to go there. Did I not say it? Did I not say it? You would have said. You would have said. I think. I think not. I know. Ah. Uh, you would have said. I think not. I would. Well, actually, no. I wouldn't have said that. Cause even I said that before. Why the fuck would I say? Say that it wouldn't be based around. You couldn't. You can't mix facts and opinion. Why the fuck would I not? That makes no sense. All right. That alone doesn't make sense. But all right, man. I'm kind of surprised that though, that people think of that of me. But I would never say that. <laughs> um. But um. Back to the opinions in hand, but um, well, not the opinions, but um, back to the situation in hand. Yeah, it's gonna be abundantly clear that this man is gonna go directly to like just relying on the production argument, and the other guy is gonna be based uh, relying on the mic performance argument, which again, like I said, that part alone is pretty, pretty flawed because there can be like loopholes to it, so but. I want to see what happens after this because I also want to know where he puts him in here based on production even though again you can't take layers out you can't do that but I'm gonna let them go I'm gonna let them go and understanding how much help is involved in making these great albums I'm going to talk about impact and belonging to gay 
Yeah, but when I look at, and this is what I mean about his B-side, Mike, when I look at what his best songs are, like, most of his best songs to me, and that's not to say that he doesn't have solo shots, but Mike, his solo shots are not as long or as hard as the people that you're standing the next to. They're just not. And as far as the single go, even if I give you that, like, over Jay, these singles aren't, like, impactful or genre breaking singles. Like, this ain't rocking through and I ain't no joke. I know you got sold my melody, but you have him up there with the song. This is not the only person that ain't hard to tell is what love. It's not. You're talking, but you're breaking him. Are you going to let me finish? You're breaking him. You're talking about the relationship that you do. Then he has better singles and besides, and you only get two thousand. Why are you bringing up people other than Jay? Talk about Jay in that ass record. Jay ain't got those rocking records to talk about either. I've been saying this stuff about okay. Jay. Don't want to have Jay so high. That's why I had, I had Jay so high because of how he impacted all y'all. Like when this podcast started, you were arguing with me about whether he was better than us. Like it's two and a half years later, we keep finding out the difference. Separation is not so obvious in real life before, but I've been saying that. So all of you all that have held Jay so high for so long, you all need to address that. I've never been one of those dudes. He's never been in my number one spot ever. So Don't address that. Why do you guide him over this guy? Okay. No, mostly about impact. You can see impact y'all. That's what I'm, I keep telling you about his hustle and the hustler that he is because he's got all of y'all placing him like that. He was never like that for me when Big and Pac was alive and Rocket was coming back. And I said it then. I've been saying it on this podcast. I have him placed up high because of y'all, not because of me. Oh, don't blame us. No, 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 don't blame us. Definitely y'all. No, because now you're sitting here arguing that you didn't want me. But you still better than Kanye. No, 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 no. You argue that you don't want me to highlight your hits. Why can't I highlight his hits? I'm putting hits up against hits. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. First of all, this is hip hop, right? So when you bought up the numbers and you bought up the whole hit thing, first of all, I've never seen you do that before. That's why I was like, no, 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 fam, bring up the singles that got released. I'm going to get to music. that. I'm going to get to that. But I think it's one of the reasons why I hate not to hustle because it didn't go gold and I'm not great rap songs. Go, go. You know I love those records. You know I love these guys. But again, I think in the group of Jay and his, his glorious, illustrious career, and why he sat on that stage and said, nobody versus, it's based on hits. It's not based on those records you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm starting there. I'm not starting there on Nelly. But he's already there. So now, since he's such a hit maker, and he's one of the biggest hit makers numerically, it's because a lot of people harp on Jay with the hits. That's his strength. Okay, so but this is what I mean. When you're doing that, Mike, you're being unfair to records like Made You Look. I, again, you name another artist. I wouldn't do that if I was talking about Nas versus uh, Kanye West. I would position it But Jay Z strength is in his hits. That's why I started the whole my whole uh, uh, breakdown no, on that. It, it is. is not. It is. It's not it might, you're talking about you personally. I'm talking about the factual. So no, 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 no. Cool. 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 You're in denial. Cool. You're in denial. You're, you're, you're in denial. talking you're about two different things. Cool. 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 I never said that. We said on. The Dude, literally, you want to be talking about him being in denial. Brother, I'm sorry to say this, but do you realize that you literally tried to harp on harp on a fucking full-on tangent about, about the fact that you have to base this entire, entire thing about MCs based around production? When MCs barely, barely have the money to even get this shit. They barely have the money to even work on work on getting that type of production. I, I would say in like at least a small percentage of MCs barely have the money to cover that up. And I'm not talking about just rappers, mainstream rappers, underground rappers. Those guys probably have the money to already already get that through. Cuz again, there are layers to this shit. When it comes to layers, Again, the money comes with it. If you're gonna literally assume that they literally, literally already have the money by the time they already got through the underground, then that's fair, but you literally have to realize that it takes them, and I'm sorry to say this, there's barely that amount of MCs that has, like, one, the amount of production stuff that they have, because again, like, um, they need a ton of stuff, and they would need a lot more help to grow as an artist. And if you literally just immediately assume that they already have the money to, like, make that production the second they came into the rap game, I don't know how you could immediately think that that would actually benefit them, one. And two, the production alone would be the only thing that will provide for them. Because again, skill skill has its benefits. So does production. If you just base it around only one out of the other, it's not going to work. Because there's going to be a lot of, again, there's going to be a lot of um, loopholes to it. There's going to be a lot of loopholes to it. So I just don't understand how you immediately assume that that would be the case. But, hey, that's their opinion. I'm not going to say anything. But it is cringy how the fuck they're doing this. 
Like, come on, dog. Mm-hmm. Thank God, damn. On this podcast, I've said, I know you've heard me say, Jay Strip is in his B side, quality wise. But where he stands in this game, the reason why he's married to Beyonce is not because of no fucking politics. It's usual. You know that. Let's be real. Him getting in the Rock and Roll, oh, him getting in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has nothing to do with those records you're speaking of. Right? He's a hustler, homie. And he can only and you know why he's able to hustle? You're basically That's saying don't right? assume anything unless yeah. you it's not because of the, the ego. It's not because of those records. It's not because of a million and one. Unless you're fat it's from the person you're talking about. Wait, what? I'm I'm basic first of all, first of all, because I don't know if you're basically trying to make you get the fact pretty pretty much, yeah. Basically and you're kinda misconstruing what I'm saying. I'm saying don't assume that you know something about it without doing the research. Because it will be very, very easy to tell when someone hasn't done their research and they're making bold claims that should not even even fit the bill at all. But maybe I didn't say that. I, if I didn't say that, I'm a fucking idiot. Um, but yeah, I'm basically saying like, hey, don't you need to make sure you have hard-earned evidence to back up these claims. Because if you're just going to immediately go into the debate with only one layer of the of the argument, it literally causes so many loopholes that, one, you completely lose it. And then, two, um, somebody can get this over you in a landslide. So, again, you can't do that. Unless it's the same particular... Um, unless it's the same particular fact that you have ran through for a long time, you have to go with both. You can't literally go with either one. Because I've always said this, like, layers are there for a reason and placed there for a reason. If you know that in order for hip-hop artists to prevail, they have to have certain amount of layers, there should be no fucking reason that you should be picking one after the other there should be no fucking reason you should be doing that but in this day and age they choose to do it regardless hell they even did this back then back then back in the 2000s to 2010s i wasn't even fucking surprised when it still continued and prevailed up until like this recent part of the years like i wasn't surprised by it at all Until you get the facts, basically, yeah. You're basically on the right track, by the way. I meant to say that. You're basically on the right track. Um, but yeah, that that's crazy. That's crazy how that immediately, like, just drawn apart from things. Like, seriously. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, cause I'm still trying to figure out what this man's thing is. Cause if he said like top 10, I, I would be surprised again, yet again for that. <laughs> oh boy. We know those records are great, but that's not the records that he's made him the legend he is on a mainstream level. It's not, so that's why I'm going. Albums, slash song, longevity of albums, slash song, slash collaboration, career longevity quality, voice. Why are you bringing up hits? That's well, not part of the criteria. Let me ask you. The reason why I'm bringing up hits is because I think it, it goes to my position as Kanye West as a songmaker and a quality songmaker. And I look at a lot of these records that were very successful. It's just him by himself, right? And uh-huh. when I look on the other end, when we're talking about the other artist who is Pharrell for being one of the biggest hit makers in hip hop, along with LL Cool J, it doesn't line up with Kanye West's hits and the lack of help that he has on his hits. Whereas if you look at Jay Z's hit records, and that's why I highlight the hits, it looks like their precedence. It looks like Can I Get It, which is helped by Ja Rule and Bill. Ja Rule gets that hook. He got Hard Knock Life. That's a solo mission. He got Money Cash Hopes. Which is DMX, Swiss, you know what I mean? You got Nigga What Nigga Who, which is uh, Jazz, Emil again. You got Do It Again, that's Beanie Siegel. You got Big Pimpin', that's UGK. I can continue on. So I wanted to highlight the fact that when we're talking about from a song making standpoint, the other guy, 
through the wire, all balls down, Jesus walks, workout plan, diamond, gold digger. These are all platinum plus singles on solo missions. And I think that's impressive. On quality records on top of that. Okay. And an array of subject matter. Now I would like you to let me speak. Go ahead. I'm going to say this to you in full. And I'm going to take everything that you said in fine. But Mike, respectfully, that don't have anything to do with the criteria. You just inserted that. So that's not part of the criteria. You're doing that to try to make your argument. And I get that. But nowhere is that in the criteria. It's, so it's, it's, it's the song making an impact. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to this again. And I'm going to try to explain this to you. And I'm pretty sure that you understand this, Mike. Because you were there. Well, Mike, <clears throat> if you think the gold digger is going to resonate in the canon of hip hop, the way their presidents too is, then what are we doing? Because you and I both know, you and I both know, Mike, that although gold digger might be a bigger hit that was really, it might be a single that turned into a bigger hit record than Jay's single that turned into a classic hip-hop record. But like, what we doing right here is hip-hop. And, and Kanye's gold digger sales, quite frankly, don't matter or equate to this conversation at all. You need to stop trying to insert it to make the argument for him about his classic and quality song. Like, nobody is debating, no, nobody is debating Kanye's ability to make a great song. I hate, you know this, like, most of the great hip-hop songs that were ever recorded, they all have different MCs, but there's usually a great producer behind a hip-hop song. Look at Wu-Tang's run, RZA, Dr. Dre, Death Row. No, most of the stuff is sitting around a producer. You want to know why? Because more than anybody else, you want to know what great producers get? Like, when you prove yourself to be a great producer, you know what you get at the drop of a dime? Help from everybody. And that's what all everybody is saying. And none of these other guys that are this high up on this list have this level of help, Mike. And my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is an example of that. That's why I mean, no, we don't have to talk about the hits. We can just talk about, like, the actual records. Go look at all his great records that aren't these big hits that you're talking about. Oh, those are the records that have help. A hey, Soul Paul, uh, Let Me Down. Uh, what's the one with uh, Get Em High? We'll get to all of that. This is just Two part words. one. This is just part one. Right, I, I want to get through part one. We're going to slow play this. I get what you're saying, but for every one of those, I can have solo shots and some great B sides as well. But I do want to get to this, get to this one thing. Which you... I live, Mike, oh, no. Okay, I will admit that was. Then I was definitely wrong about the fact that if he was only basing it this on. Right, so if this is a part one, then I need to get into this part. So, yeah, that's my bad. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I think it's very convenient to harp on reasonable doubt in this argument. But. What I would like to, like, what would like what to, I would like to correlate, like, and I think that I think it's a little bit dishonest to try to compare Gold Digger with Dead President. I would much rather like a Through the Wire Dead President's comparison. I think it's a little bit more easy. But no, Jay's incredible. I think Dead President is one of the greatest, uh, you know, hip hop songs of all time. My personal favorite Jay. But Jay's got, but Jay's got more of those than Gay. Like, I do. But Jay's got some classic hip hop records. From what I hear, here so far, I think everyone is basically basically judging what is best for everyone based on experience on the subject. When everyone experiences things differently that's a good insight that's definitely a good insight and that was another thing I was gonna bring up too because I think a lot of people also need to realize like when you do certain albums I feel like when you when you have a different perspective on everything it can kind of put you in a different situation where if it's not explained in the context it will it will fuck up on the long run now, as you can possibly tell from me literally assuming that this man was just going to base it around that, that part was definitely my fault. However, when someone is just basically picking one criteria instead of just adding them all alone, or I'm sorry, adding them all, it drags the entire, one, it drags the entire debate, two, it just shows that there are loopholes to it because everything has to fit together. So, of course, a lot of people don't know that. So, I can't expect them to know that. I can't expect them to know that. But, when you get certain people, especially in this day and age, when you get certain people to literally make opinions about certain shit, and if they make false claims and, one, choose to stick with it, they can stick with it all they want, but you're losing in the long run because there will be certain parts where if you're losing in that situation, there has to be at least some type of facts that you have to have in order for that to back up your claim. And if you're making claims that are completely false, they're more basically speculation. Like you're basically speculating at that point. So that's why I say like, when you basically judge an artist, there has to be some type of layers you're going on. Now, personally for me, I have studied hip hop for, I think at least round, at least now for over, over, I say it's been 13 years now, cause I've been doing this since 2010. And long story short, um, I did a ton of research like throughout this entire Sequence I even went through all the documentaries. I went through every single thing every single article even and 
throughout this entire time, I even listened to some of the... I even listened to all of the artist's music. Hell, bro, it took me so long to go through all the music of that particular era versus from the 19... Like, when rap first started versus where rap is now. It took me so long to get through that. Like, that six-year drought was a fucking nightmare. And after that six-year drought, I decided to get myself into, like, other things and keep my studies in place and know exactly where everything is ranked, know exactly where everything is set. And, again, it, of course, is approximately clear that, again, people are not capable of having conversations without bringing up their own opinions. So as a result, I say this to say, when you make an argument, you have to make sure that, hey, there has to be some type of evidence to back up your claims. Now, some of those claims based on one layer can be nitpicked and can be taken out. So, they have to remember that. That's all I'm basically saying. But I do agree with you, though. I do agree with you on that. Huh. Even to this day, you can never, for this argument, and it's funny, over Jay's long illustrious career, it's very interesting that you're sticking within 96 and 97. You're not mentioning You do have to go beyond that. You have a two-year career thing. You have a two-year career thing. You can read Here's what Kanye doesn't have. Kanye doesn't have those records that these other guys have in the solo shop that make you feel like that's one of the best MCs I've ever heard. He just doesn't, Mike, and therefore not part of this conversation, really. Now, if you want to talk about everything else, then he probably qualifies or quantifies himself on some sort of level. And because of that, I might have made a misstep about not putting him in the top 20. Now, let me not say this. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm almost done. But to sit him next to, you know, place him somewhere between Biggie and KRS one in Ice Cube. Like, it's one of those things, Mike, I'm just going to tell you, it just doesn't pass the eye test like that. It doesn't really pass the ear test because it's like, no, hold on. I love me some gold digger. But you're telling me that we take it, that nigga head over the dude that made America most one in the desert? No, 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 no. The thing is, he's making good points, but the issue is, is that, like, you can literally add production and literally add all those fundamental layers. The problem is, is that you guys are literally basically just arguing one over the other, and there's flaws in pretty much in those particular arguments. There's flaws to those. So I'm just, I'm just speechless on how the hell... Oh, this is not going to end well because both of them are losing this argument. I'm not even going to hold you. Both of them are losing these arguments. That's just sad because I'm like, there's no way you can come up with arguments like this and then just fundamentally lose the value of it. Like, it it's crazy. Like, wow. I, I just can't see that. Since you want to harp on gold digger because it's obviously a record, so you, you, wanna, you don't specifically love. Harping, I mean, that's like that's like me harping on. on that's like me harping on Ice Cube making you can do it, put your back into it, or or, or you know what I'm saying we be clubbing. Gold digger's better than love. Yeah, 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 shit happens. You know what I mean? Let me get to this uh, super chat so we don't isolate the people. Blue Collar Hustle says, name the top ten MC who has a video of his ghostwriter performing his iconic song two years before release. Jesus Walk was written by Rob Fest. No, it wasn't. And if, if y'all think that Rob Fest, because Rob Fest never said he wrote the record, he never said that. Uh, DJ Bruce Almighty says, uh, we don't always know who ghost wrote music. Keyword. Um, 36 Chamber says, uh, to follow that up, I don't listen to Kanye more uh, versus anyone else in your list. It's not a popularity contest. We only hold Jay high uh, lyrically as a band. I mean, that sounds great. I agree, but, you know, that's not why the masses hold him high. Um, it's the hit records. We gotta, we're not going to sit here and act like Jay is not heralded for his hit records. And that's why I actually brought to the table his hit records versus another guy's hit records. Um, Jason Lund with the Super Chat says, if you're talking about hip-hop artists, then Kanye and Dr. Dre are top 10 rap artists. Uh, they're not, uh, they're not lyricists MCs to me, though. Hov and Nas are great hip-hop artists and lyricists. It's a difference. Okay, um... This is an MCs list, by the way. This is an MCs list. Uh, Michael Hunter says, uh, Jay got... I would highly doubt that you would literally say that they're not... Well, I wouldn't say... Say that they're top tier, but they're definitely lyricists MCs. Or in other words... They are somewhat, well, yeah, they are regular MCs. At least average at best. Because if you're just going to literally assume that they're not, like, just regular MCs, then I, I don't know what to do with you. 
See, this is why I hate the fucking wording when they use shit like that. In this day and age, they can figure out a way to do this shit all the time. God damn it. And that kind of fucks me up to a certain degree, because now I have to literally explain some of the weirdest fucking wordings that these guys have ever came up with, and it makes no sense. Like, come on, dog. Jeez. Ugh. It's, this is why I said this shit is so fucking cringe. Like, the wording doesn't make sense. And, again, you're literally just basically giving huge, huge, huge parts of, like, one, two sides of an argument that literally can fit all together. And, two, two mega, mega mega cringe takes that should not be in here which i shouldn't be surprised because again that i knew they were going to make some takes like that but at the same time oh it's like bro what is it going to take this entire and i'm not saying that this generation alone but what is it going to take this for people to realize that these things don't fucking make sense and don't add the fuck up they just don't <sighs> God. Uh, 20 bits like Holy Grail. Like, Finding a fly 03 uh, was underwhelming. Bane helped today, not quality. Uh, Carlo was accepted. According to that Ghostwriter list that posted on Twitter, Drake hasn't made a hit since 2001. And those hits are all credited to Snoop, Jay Z, Roy, and Eminem. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think Drake will be the rest, man. I think it is. Hold on, but when Drake has Ghostwriter credits, you believe them, and we keep telling you Kanye has credits, and you're like, no, that's not true. So you're picking and choosing. I'm not picking and choosing. People literally sent you stuff, and people keep saying it repeatedly. Like, Who? Y'all are both picking and choose. Oh, God. All right. I like to keep an open mind. I like everyone listening to listen to Aaron Peer. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. I like to keep an open mind. I like everyone to listen to opinions that, that I can expand my career to heights. I, w I would do this or can see and fix or improve my me music and art based on everyone's experience. Right or wrong is black and white, but in reality, everything is gray, which is very true. Again, that's why I said like, again, that, that alone, that alone shit, like relying on everything, it just can't be like, you can't put it in black and white. That's just not going to work. Everything has to be like in a neutral state, but unfortunately they can't do it. Like I, I even said this, even said this before. Bro, I will, I will say this and happily say this. Some of these critics, especially nowadays, you can't listen to them anymore because it's very clear that they're just giving negative criticism. And when they're giving negative criticism, it doesn't improve for others. Like again, they're not, there are certain artists that don't improve because the negative criticism is not even good constructive criticism. So, again, as a result, they can't do the same thing. Come on. At that very point, it's like, we can't even make, like, good, like, we can't even make good takes. We can't give any improvise to others, like, and for following rappers, you can't even expect them to, like, do better. And here's the other thing. Once these guys start, start coming out in their prime, they... These guys immediately tackle them, tackle them to the core, and then, and then nitpick certain things that they can improve on as they, as they can get through their career. You could literally give them constructive criticism, but, like, the amount of negativity behind the criticism is not enough to go through. Because then, that would make them assume that I'm not a capable artist. Oh, I'm not really, really fit to be a good artist like those type of criticisms will get them there because again they're not keep it'll make them incapable of doing something like that and it just shows like hey sometimes negative criticism is not really the best criticism it's funny because everyone is connected directly and indirectly there you go again like ah uh, that's where that's the fun, that's the frustrating part. It's like everybody is connected in directly and indirect or indirectly. And if, if the, bro, and if the entire arc is not 
based on just that alone, they will literally like twist the fucking fucking conversation around and turn it into something that is not even a part of the conversation. It's so, so, it's so, and, and I'm sorry to say this, but it's so negative heavy, you can't literally expect these artists to listen to critics anymore. Like, even if you give, like, constructive criticism, there's certain things that they, they have that, one, they're, they have their flaws on, and they need to work on, and there are certain ones where they're either in a solid place and they know what they're doing. They know their places, they know exactly what to do in life, and if they want to stay there, they want to stay there. That's up to them. I'm not going to live. These people shouldn't be giving them criticism on something that, one, shouldn't be spoken on, two, shouldn't be chastised because you you have a problem with it and you want to give negative criticism to some someone that one you just don't like that's why i said like separate your opinions with certain advice because it's there's be times where your mind clout your judgment that's why you have to be super careful with that you have to be super careful with that I have a very like this is why I made this prediction I, I I think I made this prediction like in one of my videos a long time ago I know I think this was like about at least about a few months ago I made a particular um, claim stating in the next I'll probably say the next seven years lyricist lyrical rappers will be will be out of will be out of the rap game for good now I say that with a 49% of that happening because, again, there's still certain people and like a small ounce of hip hop fans that literally want to listen to like certain rappers with messages. So, if that makes it into the mainstream, there will be like a four, again there will be like a 49% chance of that fading in seven years. Very low chance of that happening, but that's just my opinion. Well, sorry, that's just my guess and my prediction. Not an opinion, good lord. But yeah, let's continue. One has sent proof. The writing, when we talk about writing or whatever, it's known that people wrote Dr. Dre stuff. You can even hear it in the records. If you have a gear for music, which I know you do, boo. That's why you're doing this show. When you hear it, wake up in the AM, propose to be. I'm ready to fight, doing something in your seat. You know who that is who wrote that. When you hear it, things say, you can't say anything gangsters. Time's changing, young niggas is aging, becoming OG. You know who wrote that. I can't hear that in any of Kanye West's records. I can't. Shit, this shit sounds like him. Period. Ron Best don't sound like him. Who wrote his verse on Chain Head? Because he got a better verse than all the niggas on that song. <laughs> The problem is with an artist working on their own is that the recognition isn't going to be the same. And that's something that a lot of people need to understand. And just because that that is the case, that does not mean that it is a general, general role to literally put them as... And, and I again, I want to see where exactly he puts... He puts Kanye, because I'm very, very, very vigilant on that. And then we'll have a discussion about it, but hmm. Wait a second. And like we said on the previous show, when you got uh falling back on that ass with a hell of five gangster wing. I mean not Snoop's first, but when uh, Drake comes in there, you can tell the Snoop Rogue thing. I can't. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Let's not play crazy. Like <clears throat> The problem is that people these days are closed minded and they are focused on one thing but not looking on the other side of the art. Oh my bro, bro, thank you. I am it's like, I have been saying this shit for a long time. It's like, everybody has just like, 
been closed-minded and only focused on one side. Like, what is going on? And I've been saying this shit for years. Like, the only reason that I have not told, like, and I even said this, I have not told anyone on the media side is because it's very clear that no one is willing to listen. No one is willing to listen. So that's why I like, as, a, as someone who's literally a historian, I had to literally like keep myself from not talking about this to others on social media because the shit gets, the one, the shit, the literally, uh, the shit gets real, real old for them apparently. And most importantly, they can't have a conversation alone about this. Like they're too close minded on everything. That's why I said, like, when it comes to the open-mindedness of every single thing on hip-hop, you have to look at it from an open-mind lens. Because otherwise, you're just lit literally, one, you're screwing yourself in almost the majority of every argument that you have. And second, you're picking one side, but the other literally covers half of the argument that you're only choosing. Like, I'll give you a prime example. If you choose two sides, no, two parts of, of a five-man category, and half of it doesn't even fit the budget, and you're struggling to literally put yourself in the same place, and when the argument itself struggles to keep its same benefits, and it's struggling to literally like what like cover you in the argument there's just no way of saving you because at that point the argument you try to make with only do that sometimes but they also add their opinions to it which is fine you can do that you can do that you can have your own opinions that's fine my issue is that when you literally try to make an opinion a fact that's my issue and when that other side side is literally making some points as well both of you fucking lose because the flaws are not are still in the same place. They're still in the same fucking place. You can't make an argument like that. It's just not gonna work. I just feel like you can't make that argument. I'm trying to Okay, I can't even hit him. Wow, that's just upsetting. Wow. Alright, fine. Fine by me. Like, I'm not sitting here being oblivious. If it sound like Pusha T wrote kind of gay shit, I would say it doesn't. We know what rappers sound like. We know what these guys sound like. We know how um, Dr. Dre's delivering on Three Kings and Rick Ross wrote that shit. Let's not be crazy here. <laughs> Jay Short with the Super Chat says, in fairness, like, if you're using Tarks, Eminem is over yet. Quality's not there. The only reason why I'm using Tarks is because when we talk about quality, Jay Z and Kanye are in a similar dimension. Eminem is over yet. Eminem charted this high because he's white. Let's just keep it real. The ear test says that Jay is better. Uh, this is. Imagine using race as an excuse for somebody else's skill. Are you fucking... Bro. I can't. I can't. It's almost like... And this is my fucking community that's doing this shit. I can't. Bro, I can't. Regardless if you're white or black, please, for the love of God, do not bring race up in a conversation like this. Oh my fucking god. We are in a generation where where race does not matter anymore. Let this shit go. Let it go. I am so sorry for getting angry. It's just that I, I got so tired of people doing that. Like, that's not a fact. That's just your opinion. That's literally just your opinion. And for anyone to think that that's a fact, it's like, you can't use that as an excuse. Like, what? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. It, like, we're back to square one again. Like, I am so fucking annoyed. Like, I even said this in, like, one of my videos. I've said this before. You cannot bring race to fucking... Fucking rapping because, again, just because... Just because they rap on a different level does not define their race. It doesn't. Like, come on. <laughs> God. Oh, man. I was cringing at first, but the fact that this motherfucker liked to say that. <laughs> okay, dude. The same way they're...
there's no good or bad, but on both sides of the story, one question nobody asks is how how the people are evil evil in the first place. That's very true. That is very true because then there is a lot of people that think that everybody is a role model of the rap game when in reality there are certain rappers that are not and I keep saying this shit. Stop bringing the role model into the fucking celebrity space. Everyone is human. Not everyone is perfect. Stop making that assumption. That doesn't work. <laughs> Like, I'll say this for a prime example. M's, Eminem is a complete... And I'll say this right now. M can be an asshole. He's sometimes an asshole, but he's very humble on the shit that he does. Now, I can say the same thing... For, same thing for almost everyone else. Um, they could be arrogant. They can't be role models. What do you think J. Cole was literally mentioning about this? There are no role models in the hip-hop hip-hop history like literally there are no role models exactly that will represent the friendly side of fucking hip-hop like there's no such thing as a fucking friendly side of hip-hop like come on oh my god wow this is this is just outrageous and also by the way just because somebody literally cut not cusses in their songs does not mean mean they're being friendly they just choose a different route or either that or some or some of them just literally choose to go on the older side of hip hop, basically literally, literally rapping without cussing. Which, in all retrospect, that's happened since damn near the late 70s to early 80s. That's happened for a long ass time. So, again, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> Only a debate because Jay chose to be commercial. Obviously, Jay's a better lyricist, but he's not the better songwriter. Uh, to call up the Super Saiyan. That same let's go uh, also gives Kanye writers credit for Jay Z and Drake. So Ye needs more respect. Now, now that you mention that, we all saw, um, we all saw, uh, what was that? Um, uh, what was By the way, Ye needs more respect. Nigga, do you realize how much respect this man gets? <sighs> that, uh, okay, cool. Black album. What was it? Not Black album, you know what I'm talking about. The DVD for the last concert. Music Matters. <laughs> yeah, when Kanye basically gave them all the. Lines for Lucifer, but we never say Kanye wrote Lucifer for Jay. That's just collaboration, man. Yeah. You know, I gotta get my soul right. I gotta get these demons out of my life. Did he write Lucifer for Jay? No. Okay. <laughs> 36 Jay percent. Kanye's production elevates him too high on this list. Uh, do a top 10 artist list and put him uh, that high. The hip hop artist list, not nah. impact. The experience, goals, beliefs, and can change a person's life big time. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't even be surprised by that, dog. I, I wouldn't even be surprised by that. Uh, or no, sorry, life experience. I, I completely missed that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that can change somebody in the long run. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm just super, super confused. and. You know what? You know what's funny? How much would it guarantee somebody is willing to tackle my, tackle the arguments that some people will bring up, bring up on those fundamentally flawed arguments? How much you want to guarantee somebody will literally try to argue me on that? And how much you want to guarantee that some of them are actually going to do that? Like, bro, it's, again, close-minded things. You have your experience, you have your beliefs, but don't sit there and try to live, literally try to justify, by doing certain shit. And then picking one side or the other when it doesn't fucking work like that. You know in damn well it doesn't. ridiculous to me how some people could do that like it's just ridiculous like I, I guess it would be like life experiences that would cloud the judgment of certain people's minds I'm just I 
I had to learn that like the hard way too. That's that's what kills me about this. It's like, like, and people wonder why. Like, hey, why do I listen to the media of of hip hop? There's a fucking reason why the fuck I don't. These motherfuckers don't know what the hell they're talking about sometimes. Not all the time, just sometimes. They make bold claims like that, and it, and it serves the webs. And the next thing you know, you have people who are dick writing certain fucking artists that shouldn't be, that shouldn't one get that much praise, and two, that shouldn't be, shouldn't be said as flawless or perfect artists. Like, come on, that that shouldn't be a thing. Come on. Yes, lyrics. No, lyrics is a separate list, guys. But he's not an MC like that. Like that's what I'm saying. This is still a MC list, and then comprehensively what the MC does. And I'm trying to tell you that he actually, you know, what he is really like. He's the best producer to ever MC, and so he can because he's the best producer to ever MC. This is what I'm saying. He can actually take the shit that people give it, give him, and make it his own because he's a bigger star and more charismatic than the MC is. He's the first producer to have it that way. Like Dr. Dre's not more charismatic than Snoop or Jay or even Eminem. You understand? So when he delivers it, it's not coming off. No, Kanye is more. It's a okay. You can best at one thing, but don't say say your opinion on the other side without experience firsthand. <sighs> there you go. Because again, the experience matters to a certain degree. However, sometimes experience can be a little bit flawed to the argument if it's just one-sided. That's why I say, like, again, you can't you can't do that alone. You can't just base it on experience alone either. So you have to be super careful on that. But anyway, back to the uh, conversation at hand. Um, More charismatic and a bigger star than the people that are feeding him shit. Like, and that's what I hear. So when you're saying that, it's like, oh, no, no, no. I do totally believe that it's going online because there's no way that it hasn't been going online. Don't look at the credit. Forget Jesus Christ. I'm going to give him credit for Jesus like you do, like, but when I look at all his comprehensive works, and you literally hold out the book, and you look at all the songs that are actually all-time great, like the singles I'm going to give you, if you go look at his all-time great songs, all of them, like, almost all of them have help. The ones that you named, you almost, you almost named all of them that don't have help, I think outside of Can't Tell Me Nothing, and Power. Y'all didn't let me get to any of those. I, can I finish the little well, so Can I finish the solo mission, too? And again, listen, we have, so I, I, and I, don't, I don't really start by touching this guy because, you know, I think, you know, I understand what you're saying, but can I explain that? Because none of us, I've heard of Lupe before, because I work on radio, I got all that, uh, that Aaron's the promo CDs with Lupe on it, I thought he was dope. Touch this guy was just showcasing Lupe, you know what I mean? And that was a jump off record, and I ain't saying this to disrespect Lupe, because Lupe's verse is brilliant on there, but that song is what it is, even if Lupe's not on there. Like, that song, if you cut that song off into two verses, he did that for Chicago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Putting Lupe on that record was to, was to elevate and showcase a new artist that could rock. He, do you really think he, quote unquote, needed Lupe on that record? No, you think Nas needed Jay-Z on Mike's Adventure when you listen to the rest of the static, but he'll have to say... Yeah, they're not going to get there. When we talk about the Atlanta, what you say, it had one. Yeah, they have to be credible feature. Somebody who was unknown, the fact that he was unknown didn't change the fact that he was a feature. I understand what you're saying, but we all... Nobody... But no one ever positions that record like Nas needed him on that record, and that's how people are positioning... Even if the introduction is still there, I don't think they... I think Lupe didn't really get that much attention that people actually think he did, but... That's... No one is perfect there. There will always be a, f a flaw in some way, in the body, mind, soul, somewhere, some, uh, some with everything in the universe. That's what I'm saying, and I'm like, oh my god. When somebody literally tries to say, oh, there's a perfect person, bro, not everyone is perfect. Now, could I say, say that there will be somebody who, who has the, I would say, I wouldn't say pitch perfect, but almost definitely higher, highly accurate, accurate, I would say highly accurate, and, and most importantly, hand in hand best experience in the career, probably, but that would also depend on whether or not what, what the full criteria is. Because again, if you're just, just basing it off of one criteria, that kind of fucks it up. But... You already heard me say that, but back to what I was saying from before. If they're not in the, I guess in the same same retrospect as everyone else, because there will be times where certain artists um, are not in the same retrospect, but they came into the same class, like same similar in the um, X, double XL. There's a slight chance that they will like prevail in that same place, but I wouldn't go in the 
same retrospect as others. But also, I, I want to also tackle the um, race argument when it comes to hip hop because this has been highly overused and very, 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 very overrated in hip hop history. Race does not matter on your skill or your production. That is a that is a factor that that only is human based alone. That should not be a race thing. But the fact that people do try to use it as a race thing is crazy to me. I still don't understand why people do that. And that's the crazy part. People try to use that like same argument for almost every single rapper and it doesn't add up on why the fuck like they immediately draw that conclusion. Like it just doesn't make sense. You know in good well that somebody is is more than capable of doing something like that. They're fucking MCs. They're very capable of doing these things. And when I say they're capable, they're not be able to perfect it, but they're still fucking capable of doing it. Like come on. I just don't understand how the hell like that's a thing with y'all. Like somehow an artist has to be blacked in order to get the respect in the rap game. Like hell no. Like stop doing that shit, bro. Like that shit is overrated. Leave the shit shit. Like this like you have to remember hip hop has evolved. And if and if you haven't realized that hip hop has evolved to a certain degree where race should not be a part a huge part of somebody else's fucking skills, then I don't know what to do with you at that point. Like, I already said this shit. Like, I, I can't keep fucking saying this. Oh, God. Like, holy hell. about this guy and his music and his albums, especially in that era. His time, everything that he did, he didn't have like some features that niggas dialed it in. People came to his albums to showcase themselves. Look at Twist on Slow Jam. Great producer, that's no, what no, I'm no, saying. No. Let me finish though, but again, y'all are punishing him for being a great producer. I'm not punishing him for being a great producer. Dude, he's ready to really see him. Who's helping who? Because when people come, let me finish, man. When people come on his shit, everything is that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not just shouting Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure Common was already doing all right before, before Ye. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Common was doing all right before Ye. <laughs> so I don't know where he's getting this argument. Do y'all like any of y'all? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Oh God. Yep. Oh man. I'm at my last strike before I actually like, bro. I, I want to leave this video so fucking bad. You keep on saying that and saying these things, and what I'm trying to tell you is that no, late registration is not the same without that Lupe verse. The college dropout is not the same without that Talib and Common verse. No matter how much they needed it, it doesn't change the fact that those records on that album with the help is part of why those albums are so classic. And when you look at his classic album, most of the classic songs have help, as in about half. Actually, I'm going, I'm going through that. a lot this album. No, no, no. Jay shit got No, I said classic. I, I hit Mike like you. I said classic no, no. records. No, classic records. Like, that's like. Race doesn't mean anything. Everyone, everyone gets some, something in common with some, with someone some way. It, be it life experience, um, goals, belief, and personality. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm just kind of confused on where, like this, like again, 
Again, I'm sorry to say this, but my people have been doing this shit for a long ass time. They've been literally, literally pushing this race narrative for such a fucking long time. I just choose to ignore them. Because you know why? Because at this very point, I can't agree with them on this shit. I can't agree with them further on this shit. Like, I love my, I love my community. I always have. But there is certain things where you guys have got to just please, for the love of God, think about the shit before you say. Like, it just, oh, wow, bro. Jesus. And by the way, um, I want to also make it clear as well that, again, I agree with what this man is saying. Um, the guy um, that is mentioning the, um, the mic performances and all that stuff. He is right, but the issue is is that the guy that literally is also saying like, hey, Jay-Z had help more. Motherfucker, I'm pretty sure if you get help regardless, I don't think it matters. In order to literally literally do be an artist, you need to have a team around you. Because after you get out of the fucking underground, you have to work, work your way into getting a producer to help your shit. And... Even with fucking videos, choreography, everything. You have to have even fucking features. You would need you would sometimes need that type of type of help. Regardless if it is like that. Like come on. That argument alone is just dumb. It's just straight dumb. I'm trying to tell you, a hip hop classic matters more than this hit shit you talking to hip hop like it always has. We've never been about that over a song being a hip hop classic. Jay's got more hip hop classics on his solo mission than Kanye the Freighter have. He's got damn near more reasonable doubt than all you want. That's why I keep trying to tell you. If Kanye don't have no You Must Love Me and a Where I'm From right before. Like, literally, he's got no imaginary player streets watching back to back on the album. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this. We'll go through the album stuff. We'll go through the album stuff. 36 Chamber says, KRS One birth more to the game, to the genre from Impact over yet. Yeah, you know, I can dig that. Oh, Framer Super Chat says, Why are we framing it differently between Nas and Kanye? Uh, I was saying that I would frame it differently because I would make it more of a quality conversation because honestly, when it comes to the hits, that wouldn't be fair to Nas. I'm just showing how uh, multidimensional this MC is. Like, if you want to go with the hits, cool. If you want to go with song structure, cool. If you want to go album for album, cool. If you want to go uh, for feature game, cool. Uh, DJ Bruce Almighty with the Super Chat says, Mike J fans. Production doesn't make the multidimensional. What the fuck? Wait a minute. What? And I think I, I forgot to... I, I, I hope I didn't put it on max difficulty. Okay, I didn't start it yet. Duh. Um, but, bro, what? What? <laughs> Sir, please tell me I'm literally hearing this shit. Bro. No, dude. There's no way this man is literally saying that... Every single ounce of production makes you multidimensional. If that was multidimensional, he would actually expand the production in his craft as well. What? 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 Like, that is probably one of the most coping things you could ever say. Yo! Wow! <laughs> Yo, nah, bro, nah, B, what in the fuck? Nah, you can't, nah, y'all can't do that, bro. That is insane. That is literally the most insane shit I've ever fucking heard. I'm, um, I'm also, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring... That is, that is insane. The fact that that was a thing actually fucking mind boggles me. How do you do something like that? You know that's not... <laughs> Bro, they're going such, so bad faith right now. They are so going bad faith. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. If he if he thinks this, bro, I'm not gonna hold you, <laughs> bro. Nah, 
I can't, I can't, bro, as cringy as this shit is, I, I need to continue because in order to do this, I have to be at least the best as charitable as possible, but also I need to at least give some type of criticism. There's no, I don't really care because even if you do fix it, it only temporarily not be permanent because people slowly forget about what happens when the cycle repeats over and over in case of human greed that yeah and again it's like the money isn't isn't a is a valid thing it's definitely a valid thing but when you literally literally make it cloud your judgment that's when it becomes an issue so i happily agree with that but bro bro multi-dimensional because you're, because of the production that is, is being sent you do realize that even if somebody makes production it literally it literally drops them down has an MC well not an MC but it slightly drops them down um because of the fact that one if the production is taking over while the lyrics are are basically non-existent and what i mean by non-existent is that if the song is a song alone is over the fucking lyrics you can't literally that literally one that will deduct it two that will literally literally scratch off what they have done and the fact that you're calling that multi-dimensional is crazy that is beyond fucking coping at that point copium at best what the f nah man the fuck? Wow. All right, man. That that's crazy. I ran to him for the singles. Really? Kanye is commercial. Uh, they're in two different lanes. We're comparing commercial music to street hit. You know, this is hilarious to me because I remember when Kanye dropped and you know, and he even literally had the backpack on his back. Now people are talking. He was the backpacker. And, no, no, no. When he dropped, he was the backpacker. Jay Z was too big to get on Dave Chappelle. All Dave Chappelle had on his show was the backpack niggas. You know what I mean? But now this guy's the commercial guy. It's hilarious. It's funny to see how times change. I'm not going to totally coincide with that train of thought, but here's what I'm going to submit to you. Is this is what I mean about the difference. Let's take... <clears throat> you're talking about this whole single thing. I'm like, no, I'm like, he doesn't... I also want to bring up this as well. Y'all, you do realize that Jay-Z literally, literally stayed an MC for such a fucking long time. He didn't start doing commercial shit until probably late 2015. 2015, 2018. Damn near. And he hasn't done that since then. Well, probably because he... he well, he's probably been releasing music, but I haven't had the time to look at it. It's been such a long-ass time. But, nevertheless, he's been... He's been doing all right for himself. And even throughout the last few years, he only went commercial when um, 2014 to 2015 came up. That, those were... Well, actually, no. Take that back. I would probably say 20, well, no, I wouldn't say 20, 2011, but I could definitely say 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. I could definitely say those four years is where commercial shit started coming through. That's the only time I could really say that. But that's, I, I may be wrong on that though. Cause again, um, Jay-Z had a huge shift after like 2010, I think. He had a huge shift after 2010. So, that's just... That was just me at that point. I'm not entirely sure. But... Kanye hmm. uh, don't have a... You don't know when a PSA is a solo MC. You feel me? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, those are singles. Now, the Gold Digger house sell those records? Yes, they did. Now, what is Gold Digger next to those records, really, when we talk about this rap shit? It's nothing like... like PSA, PSA, PSA and you don't know? Literally, destroy Gold Digger. Uh, no, I think that's all. That's all. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that on Kanye's repertoire... Gold Digger would be very, very high. Well, you don't know that PSA would be very, very high on Jay's repertoire. And when you go high up on the repertoire, Jay's high shit destroys Kanye's high shit. Period. Point blank. It doesn't matter if it's single. You can go pick the 20 best Kanye records. I'll pick the 20 best Jay records. I'm going to give that shit to you, Mike. I like, love it. You're going to feel it. Because here's what I'm saying. I can give you 20 Jay songs without a feature. You can't do that with Jay. I can do that. I can do that. I can't. I didn't say 20 songs right now. Without a feature. See, the thing that's wrong with that argument is that if you literally try and think that. Like, literally, there are so many albums, so many songs of artists. If you say, name 20 songs they've done by themselves, brother, that's fucking easy. 
And that goes for almost every artist, not just Jay-Z or fucking Kanye. But then again, that would be me literally just um, basically saying like, hey, hey, every artist is the same when in reality they're not. But even then, the artists can literally come up with 20, 20 singles by themselves alone. Especially if they just got into their career. They can fucking do that. It's not hard, dude. Like, what? Uh, okay, bro. Turn the fuck up. What the f wait a minute. Is he saying what I think he's saying? You're fucking lying. Back back up back up back up back up back up. No way. Hold on. What the fuck did he say? Wait a minute. Nah, rock him, Tupac, Biggie, KRS, Ice Cube, Snoop, LL, Starface, and Ghostface, and Rake One, and probably Wayne and Common. Just you sound probably crazy right now. We need to slide your man down into the, into nah, the next 10 nah. months. And again, you don't have no evidence, Mike. Because again, no, like, you have to bring up what? record sales. <sighs> God. This is probably one of the most cringiest things I have ever fucking witnessed. Dude, what the actual fuck? Wow, that's that's actually fucking insane. <sighs> Bro. What in the actual fuck? <laughs> this is this is the biggest cope I have ever fucking seen. Is they serious? Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. That is actually fucking insane. I appreciate that. Oh my god, 45. <sighs> Bro, that, that is just... Oh my god. Yo, so I know you don't have no, I'm just starting here. You're trying to just totally denigrate the conversation. I'm bringing that up because we always talk about Jay's hit making skills. We do. Anyway, can't tell me nothing's better than PSA. Uh, the Carlo with the super chat says, hey. Oh, uh, why are we no, acting? Like, no, no, the Carlos says. No, 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 the Carlos says. Why are we acting like hits don't matter? Hits literally are what give legends uh, the fame and relevance that they use to make hip hop as big as it is. Ah, uh, th see that. Ugh. See, that is kind of overrated because a lot of people need to remember that even if they give the amount of rev relevancy, it's still. It still is not a huge part of their fucking career. There's multiple, multiple fucking things that has to be put into the, into their career in order for that to be like set. If you're just putting production alone, it fucks it up one. And there's too many fucking flaws. There's too many fucking flaws in each and every single one of them. So again, all in all, this entire fan base in this entire entire podcast is just it, it, it's it's egregious it's absolutely egregious oh god and it, it's so cringy because i'm like bro you guys are smart enough to not make these like make these opinion well not opinions but make these claims that <laughs> that shouldn't be in here oh man I, i'm gonna be struggling to deal with this if i'm gonna be listening to modern to the modern day hip hop take discussions in this. I'm gonna actually have a fucking issue. What the actual fuck? All my studies are going down the fucking drain because these motherfuckers wanna make claims like that. Jesus Christ. Oh my, yeah, nah. <laughs> I, this is so fucking cringe, dude. Wow. I agree with the Carlo. Impact is really based on hits. And when we talk about big, we talk about hits. No, we don't. We talk about everything, right? We do, but it's... Big got you beat on the hits and the B-sides. We say that all the time. We say he's the most well-rounded MC ever. No, yeah. we don't say that he just made hits. No, we Bullshit. say... But again, we say that largely... Are we lying up in here? Can I finish? 
We no, say that largely. Money. You sit up here trying to perpetrate I'm like not, you talk about gang. Hey, baby, when we talk about the totality you're of the gonna every finish. time we talk you're about gang, no, because y'all on that. You're not gonna let me finish. Listen, the reason why we say that obviously he can do the street shit, but what made Big different than the rest of the niggas that like prodigy or whatever, respectfully, was his ability to make hits as well, seamlessly. That's what made him the most rounded because Big was able to do everything that most of the typical New York MCs could do, but he could also make hit records. Him and Pac, that's what made them different. They were the ones that were able to usher hip hop into commercial radio that was just playing R&B at the time. We do talk about that. That is a very important part of Biggie's legacy. His ability to make one more chance is huge. Nobody in his time could do that. Like you right. said, y'all were grinding in the early 90s, far behind me. What he means by that is the fact that he could make shit that them niggas couldn't make. And the hits are a big part of that. We can't act like it's not. Because you're making my point narrative. for me. Hold on, you're making my point for me. And so I'm going to... I'm gonna. That is understandable because music is based on emotion and te text lyrics is based... in text lyrics is based on your experience and goals on music. That slowly changes because it makes you competitive than than fun for yourself that's another thing a lot of people need to remember because that's where the battle rap um un part of the underground comes in because if you basically keep battle rap in the same place if you're in you're in a diss war that's perfectly fair that's competition for you 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 have these issues go ahead do your own thing but but i will always say this for the benefit of the doubt you have to realize that competition matters. And if the, f especially when it comes to fucking hip hop, competition will matter if it will depend on either diss tracks, um, and I wouldn't say either, probably all three of them. Diss tracks, battle rap ability, definitely battle rap ability. And that's pretty much the those two. I forgot the other one. Yeah, that, those are only just those two. But yeah, those are the only two that you should be focusing on as far as competition. Production should not be not be with these two. Because diss tracks already, already uh, well, first of all, yeah, diss track already covers the fucking production part. So I don't know why the hell you literally immediately would put diss tracks, um, battle rap ability, in production because that wouldn't make no fucking sense especially if diss tracks already have the production value alone i ask you to just stay right there where you are you just literally bought up all these mcs and their ability to do what make street records and then the guys who separated themselves were the guys who made the singles you want to know why you started off talking about the street record and then spinning off into the hit singles and talking about big? Because usually here, what's more important, Mike? Making a hit record or making the street classic first? In hip hop, to be honest with yeah, yourself. It's the street record. But okay. Just because, so no, no, just because I started this discussion right, on the hit. Listen, listen, so respectfully, Mike, <laughs> so respectfully speaking, what I'm telling you that Kanye doesn't belong on this list. It's not because of the A sides. I started off this conversation telling you, it's like, no, this isn't about the hits. This is about the B sides because all of his breaking classic B sides, they all have hell. Again, I disagree with you, and I'm going well, to get into don't that. Have that. He doesn't have. Okay, so this is where I'm going to literally say. Um, by the way, the guy who is speaking, just to let you know, his name is Mike, uh, Mike D. Um, but basically, what's happening is is that Mike D is basically trying to make a. Um, basically saying like, hey, hey, throughout that entire, entire arc compared to everyone else, Kanye needed help with some of his records. In all in actuality, again, like I said, and I already said it before, and I'll make it quick and brief, artists literally already work on half of their stuff. The fact that you're trying to make an argument like that is pretty sad, because they already do the things they already do. I don't know why the fuck you would literally assume assume that they don't do the stuff that they do. Because then you would just assume that they already have, like, all the stuff prepped for everything. Like, you would just assume right then and there. But even then, like, it's just super sad how you can't tell from that. That's pretty upsetting, if I'm being 100% honest. But, eh. 
It's nothing new on my end. I ain't gonna hold you. It's nothing new. I forgot to share this up here, too. I forgot about that. Uh, or did I? No, I didn't. I don't think I did. There we go. I just don't see, like, the big benefits of this. I just don't see it. But I will have to disagree. I, I disagree with both of them because, again, even then, there are so many levels of of music that these guys can go on, even if is that's the case, there should be no fucking reason that this should be a debate whatsoever. There are layers and upon layers which I I guess I, I will agree. Starting with hits is kind of the worst idea you could possibly do, because again, um as far as production is concerned, production is at least and correct me if I'm wrong, but production is at least a solid 20 or 30 percent of percent of your craft at least the watch well, no it would have to be balanced excuse me what am i talking about i am acting like such a goddamn idiot i completely forget production has to be balanced and so does your skill gap skills excuse me so does your skills if you're literally going to going to literally be one up over the other, it's not going to balance out. So, again, it, it'll fuck it up in the long run. And that's not really the best thing for your record one. And it's definitely not best for for the artist either. Because, again, it will fuck it up too. So, yeah, I digress. I'm just, I'm just so surprised that people are literally, like making this assumption so quickly into their careers like god help me that's just crazy <sighs> yeah, uh, again i'm going to get to that you won't allow me to get to that because we're still going through his hits we're still no, no, going through hits. we're not going through hits we're going through singles yeah they're hits though these are like eight time platinum hits you can't say a, a, a single that is platinum, isn't it? No, no, no. Okay, Mike, if we doing this shit like maybe... A platinum... A platinum single and a platinum album can go... Can go both ways. Again. Again, I don't know why this is an argument. It's no numbers and it's like Snoop should have been number one after he dropped Doggy Style. But that's not Again, how this shit works. I'm not basing everything on what I'm saying right now. This is numbers, part buddy. one. This is part one. We got a long show to go. I gotta start somewhere. Gosh, I can't even get to the second part. LP with the Super Chat says, um, if we knock Dre for help during his best work, then Ye has to get the same treatment. We said Snoop only got help at the uh, tail end. Thank you. Thank you. I was about to say, because if you're going to knock Dre for the help, help during his best work, then you're going to have to do the same thing to fucking, fucking Kanye. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't make that argument. That argument alone is pretty it's pretty flawed considering the fact that you could do the same thing because again if you're gonna knock dre for that same thing why don't you knock kanye for that uh rob uh, rob fest and consequence both worked during the majority of his best stuff got to keep the same energy what did they write lp please tell me because again we hear this thing about consequence or whatever regardless if they fucking wrote i'm gonna No, nope, I'm leaving. Nope. 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 Goodbye. I, I'm fu- Bro, I'm- I, oh. <laughs> oh, bro. I'm actually about to lose it. God, Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm gonna- I'm gonna not, like, deal with this shit with them. Because it, it's very clear that they're being so- Oh, God. Wow. 